Hello, welcome to Diecast Calls. Thanks for joining me today. I have a little fun uh, talking about Matchbox today. A little bit of history, if you will. This uh, the first one is a number forty-two Studebaker, Lark Wagoneer, nineteen sixty-five through nineteen sixty-eight. This casting uh, set came with a plastic hunter and dog. It does have a uh, interesting canopy that is um, extends out. That's neat. You're going to find this common theme today as we're going through some of these castings on the uh, the features that that the Lesney Company designed into their particular castings. This one is um, the ca uh, trailer caravan number 33, uh, 1965 through 1960. Look at all the details on there. The kitchenette, the area that you know you could rest and relax, take it easy on along the trip, and. What Lesney did with their with their models is they included a um, a neat little feature. Some people don't like them because they they're odd and they 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 stick out and um, you know <laughs> don't match or whatever. But I think it's kind of fascinating is that the hook, the um, the hook on the back, and matches up fantastic with the trailers that they that they had during that time. So you know the the imagination of young boys and girls as they were playing. Oh, by the way. This caravan also came in a yellow and white variation. Interesting, uh, interesting little feature there. But then you could, you know, you could imagine, um, you know, adventures. You're taking the, you know, going out for a hunt. You're taking the dogs out, and uh, you're going to take a trailer along with you out in the country. Next one is a, a, a Scamel a Snowplow, number 16. This was manufactured in 1963 through 1968. Uh, this one, this variation happens to have the gray tires. It's kind of neat. And what's cool about it is, again, the, the features today is are, you know, some of the things that Lesney built into the design is the tipping uh, back, the back uh, bed, the back um, dump truck, the back dumper. And it was interesting how they, um, if you look close on, you know, on, on the underside there, the little black, um, like rubber that would allow for, you know, you could vary how far the dump would go really neat how they built in that feature the plow does have some flexibility as far as movement goes and oh i remember playing with this uh you know all those little those little things that you know may seem you know not that important i'll give you an example of the little details that you know as you're playing and you're imagining you know uh the you know, plowing the snow or you know plowing uh whatever you know, that the, um, at the, maybe there's garbage in the road or something. You know, as kids, we came up with all kinds of neat ideas. This is the um, Foden concrete truck, 1968 model. And what's cool about this one, you see the underside there? So as you, as the wheels would turn, the wheels would turn, watch what happens with the, um, see how it, it allows the concrete mechanism to turn as well that was so much fun playing with that you know you'd, you'd you'd drive along and the truck would you know mimic what a real cement truck was like hours and hours and hours of playtime. now here's an interesting um little refuse truck 1966 is the plastic and metal dump so it was plastic the plastic part and then the metal and again, another little interesting municipal, you know, the, the plow, the, the concrete truck, and, you know, the, the refuse truck, you know, picking up garbage. You know, again, just fun times, you know, playing. And again, look at the, the mechanism that was engineered into the design. This, um, this is a, uh, a Ford D-Series, medium weight, what they call lorry. And there were many different versions of this, and it had to do with the paint. So I don't know if you can see that you know, close up or not, or make see out see the difference. But there's a slight color variation, and I think maybe it's because of the the paint that was mixed for that particular day, or fading over time. But I do see this. Um, I do see the refuse truck, 1966, um, as the orange is just slightly off color uh, from one to the other. Another neat little truck that I remember from my childhood is the number 30. The eight wheel crane, 1965. Oh yeah, yeah. Mom would take me to the store. We drive into town because we lived out in the country, and 
at the hours and hours of playtime with this one, sometimes the hook is missing. You'll see that gone after time or overtime. Uh, eight wheel, eight wheel crane. What a time! What a fun time to be uh, to be a kid, huh? And to have that. And the trucks were expensive. I mean, for relatively speaking at the time, you know. So it wasn't like you were going to get one every week. <laughs> you know, you had to save up or you know you had to work it off. A piece of tape on this one. Oh, I know why. This is a really neat design. So look at this one. This is called the uh, GMC Tipper, uh, number 26, manufactured from 1968 through 1969. And this one tips. Look at the different moving parts here. All the different moving parts. See that in that cool? The green glass on the inside. You know, it tips up so you can, you know, perform maintenance on the engine. Oh, man, this was fun, too. You know, it was in the shop being worked on and... You know, the tipper was down at a certain angle and, and that kind of thing. You know, we'd flip over the top like that. We'd flip it back the other way. <laughs> so, so many hours of, of fun times uh, playing with that. You know, the different variations. Another neat one is, um, and along with this, uh, as far as the construction and, um, you know, municipal or trucks, is the uh, Mack dump truck, number eight, number 28 manufactured in 1968 through 1969. Now, this is the large tire variation, large tires, and also the dumper, similar to what we talked about earlier with the uh, with the snow plow. See the little, that little rubber piece underneath there, right there, that little square? Um, that would allow for different heights of the dump to be adjusted. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of a cool one. And large wheels on there, which would mimic, you know, out in the mines, the minefields or wherever the heavy duty, you know, requirements are, the larger tires are required. Here's a 19, uh, uh, set, the, um, the casting 71, number 71, which is the Jeep Gladiator, uh, 1964 through 1968. It was actually the J200 Townside pickup truck. We're Jeep on the back there, you know, white interior. Doors that open. Kind of neat. That was fun, too. All the imagination of hopping in the pickup truck and running into town, you know, taking care of the, um, uh, you know, the farm animals, as an example. That's a cool little, that's a cool little uh, design right there. And along with that is um, the Dodge the cattle truck. You've seen this over and over again. The, it came with, came with two plastic um, cattle <laughs> that would go in. Many times you'll find that the um, this uh, the ramp is broken. So I'm lift that up a bit, and the ramp would go down. And then the uh, you know the, the the imagination of the cattle being herded into and transported into the truck, right into the Dodge truck. So typically these are found together. The ramp is hard to find, still intact. So that's nice. That's still intact. There it snaps in. It's a Dodge, of course. Dodge cattle truck number 37. This one was manufactured in 66 through 69. Um, these are the thin wheels. Thin wheels. And then over time, you'll see this one in the wider wheels. And then in what they call the super fast era, which was uh, very, very wide wheels. So we kind of kind of a little theme here of the farm. So as long as we're talking about farm, let's talk about... What else would you find on a farm? Well, what about the number 65C, the class combine harvester, right? 1967 through 1972. What's cool about this one is, see that um, the plastic, the plastic right there on the wheel extends just a little bit farther than the, um, than the, the front scoop, if you will. And so as the vehicle was going, that would made the plastic made the contact with the road or the area or the felt in this case and mimicked the actual harvesting action of this uh, this harvester cool stuff huh so those kind of go together i'll put this guy over here that's the farm we'll put the farm all the farm things which would be what next would be the ford tractor yep the ford tractor um actually the yellow and blue Actually, they have two variations of this one. 
The yellow and blue over here, this one came out in 18 from 67 through 71. And then the blue came out in 67 through 72. Um, you know, little variations, little differences in the two. That is kind of cool. And what would go with the tractor, right? What would go with the tractor? Well, you would think you'd have a trailer, right? And sure enough, this one had the um, what they call the T2 yellow uh, and or blue. So the blue, the, the hay trailers, actually this is number 40, the hay trailers, 67 through 70, blue with yellow stakes. Those are removable. Those you can take out in little hole areas uh, that were uh, indented into the into the casting that would allow for you to take off the stake and put them back in. Again, you know, you would have all different imagination and, and uh, you know, time that you could just kind of play around and uh, remember what it was like on the farm. And then for the blue one, I do have the T2. That's the yellow. There's no stakes on this one. This was actually sold in a twin pack. That was sold in a twin pack. So put those put those together. No no stakes on that one. Uh, after that, um, let's see what would be. Well, you know what is we're talking about farm. Let's go back to the municipal for a minute. This was the um, the nineteen fifty or the number fifty seven. Um, let's see. This was the uh, Land Rover. Yeah, the Land Rover fire truck. 1966 through 1969. Uh, it says Kent Fire Brigade came with a ladder. Sometimes the ladder is missing. Get the blue dome up on top. Plastic base shows a little bit of detail in the back there. The some of the controls and the hose, etc. So let's talk about municipal and the fire department. Let's go with fire department theme here for a minute. So there's the Kent. What would go with that? Well, part of the the fleet <laughs> would be the uh, number 29-C fire pumper truck, 1966 through 1969. And uh, this this design, actually kind of fascinating, this design was based on the um, American La France. That was the Inspire design. And this particular model, this particular design, was favored actually by the small Midwestern townships in the 1960s and 1970s. So you find these a lot back in the day. Again, you know, coming up with all different sorts of uh, cool, you know, um, circumstances. You know, you're arriving at the scene of the fire and the fire trucks are there and then the ambulance arrives too. The number 54 SS Cadillac Ambulance, 1965 through 1970. This one was based on the Cadillac Fleetwood. Remember the Fleetwood model? <laughs> the other thing I was thinking about that, uh, remember the uh, Ghostbusters movie, Ecto-1? <laughs> yep, Ecto-1. So why is it called s, &S? Well, the s, &S company is uh, stands for Sayers and uh, Scoville. And from what I understand, they're still in. Look at the detail in the back there. Isn't that cool? Cool detail, blue windows. The sticker was put on. See, if you look real close, um, you'll see the, the little indentations in the casting, and that allowed the workers to line up and um, orientate the sticker so that it was as close to possible between those two little little casting marks on the ambulance. Yeah, so there's um, municipal, uh, there's the farm, here is the uh, your fire service, and <clears throat> the... Kind of a neat one here, the uh, Commer Bottle Float, number 21, 1963 actually through 1967. This one is the variation of the cow detail, decal I should say, is it the cow decal? So, um, however, if you happen to have this model and it's the milk bottle decal rather than the cow, that's a 1961 through 1962 variation. Isn't that cool? Yeah. The Commer Bottle Float. Love that variation for sure. Okay, what does it take us to? How about the um, Chevrolet Impala Taxi, number 20? There's another decal that was a sticker, and the two little the casting marks there would, again, allow the workers at the Lesney factory to line up the sticker properly. 
It's a little rough shape, but you know what? When I was a kid, my parents had this uh, had this model, the Impala four door. It was blue. Look at the hook on the back there. Yeah, sure enough. So here's an example. You know, the um, the the taxi is uh, is connected to the um, <laughs> to the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you had all different things that you could do as a kid in your imagination and what the heck you were doing, huh? <laughs> Here's a Mercedes 300. This is the SE Coupe. The doors do open, of course, it's a coupe. And um, got a little paint chip there, but this is a nice little one. The, um, the trunk also opens up. Yeah, all the moving parts. Yeah, this one was manufactured in 1968 only in this color, only in green. The next year, um, they manufactured in blue. Yeah, what a cool little car, Mercedes. Look at the detail on it. Even the 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 emblem of the Mercedes emblem. Along with that is the Opel Diplomat, 1966 through 1969. This was in gold. It's a number 36. Neat little uh, little feature on that is that the hood opens up. Again, we take that to the you know to the imaginary mechanic to have the car worked on. There's the Opal Diplomat. Good shape. Came in gold. That one came in gold during the 66 to 69 era. Next one is the number 64, the MG 1100, 1966 through 1969. Uh, and they changed the blue in 1970. And uh, this was um, in with wider wheels. They made it with the wider wheels. This is the original. Yeah. Made in England. Of course, the driver's on the on the right side. Driver's on the right side, of course. Cool car. I love that color. A little hook on the back there, too. A little for the hitch. I got a couple more here. We'll go. I'll put that one right like that. And uh, this one's kind of fun. Number 27, the Mercedes 230 SL, 1966 through 1969. This is cool, too, because I love the convertible. And the uh, the cool feature of the doors opening on these. Now, the hood doesn't open and the back doesn't open. But, again, you know, you're all set up for a little trip. You got the, you got the hitch on the back. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that neat? Mercedes. So this Mercedes and this Mercedes, the Telltale Insignia, right? Cool. That's neat. And then the last... The last um, trip down memory lane for today on this little Matchbox die cast calls feature is the Lotus. The Lotus, number 16. This was manufactured in 1965 through 1966. It's the green and yellow variation. The green and yellow. There is another variation of that, but, um, you know, with, with this car, there's a couple things. The, the plastic piece is missing a lot of times along with the steering wheel, and the wheels are missing because, they, for some reason, they're a little bit more vulnerable to being lost. But what a neat example, huh? The detail, all the detail that was placed and put into the design of the open wheel racer, the Lotus. Yep, number 19. All right, so that takes us... Um, you can't see them in the end there. I'll open up a little bit more here. You can see what's going on. There's the grouping. So I appreciate you stopping by. Do subscribe and like. I always enjoy, um, you know, positive comments. And, uh, you know, um, I do purchase collections. If you're ever interested in uh, contacting me, uh, uh, diecastcalls at gmail.com. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I do uh, love die cast and especially the vintage and as nice as possible, clean, clean vintage die cast models. Until then, we'll talk to you again. Bye, everybody.